Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing this cool wall hanging shelf. This is something we're gonna hang up in our baby's nursery, which we're super excited about. So make sure you follow along and learn how you can make these today too. If you're not following, make sure you do that. Hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube so you can get notified when we make videos like this in the future. Also, if you're looking for plans on this, we're gonna have them down in the bio, so check that out. As per usual, the project starts at the miter saw where we're gonna be cutting our pieces into rough length. We're gonna leave a little bit of extra length here so we can work with the ends down the road. But if you're working with fully dimensioned lumber, feel free to cut to the final length at this point. As I'm starting with partially dimensioned lumber, I'm gonna go ahead and run these through the planer to get them down to my final thickness, which is gonna be three quarters of an inch for this project. I typically prefer to buy my material a little bit thicker than I need so that I can finish it on my planer. This leaves a better finish than the factory finish typically, so that's my go-to. I'm also gonna clean up one edge at the jointer just to make sure everything lines up nice and square. But again, if you're working with pre-dimensioned lumber, you can skip this step. Moving over to the table saw, I'm going to be cutting everything to their final widths, starting with the 8 inch width for the backs. It never hurts to mention safety, so please make sure you guys are wearing your safety glasses, hearing protection, and a respirator in situations where you think that that's necessary. Now that we've got everything squared up at the table saw and at the right width, we're going to cut one final cut on one end and cut to our project length at the other. Although not absolutely necessary, I always recommend using a stop system with your miter saw when cutting the pieces of the same size. This not only helps prevent measurement errors, but just makes your life easier because you're not having to measure the lengths on every single piece you're cutting. Now that we've got all of our pieces cut to length, we're going to be cutting a quick 45 degree angle on our side pieces towards the top. An optional thing you can do to make your fronts a little bit more classy is to add a nice little curve. We have a video we posted before on how to do curves, but I'm going to show you quickly in this video. But because I'm doing two of these at once, I want to cut the curves at the same time. So I'm using two-sided tape to tape my fronts together. So I only have to cut one curve and sand one curve, and the profiles will be exactly the same. So here I'm using a curved uh, piece of wood around a nail. So I'm stretching it around that nail to get a nice consistent curve. Again, watch the other video I've posted on my YouTube channel for details on how to get an exact measurement out of that curve. Over here, I'm at the band saw, but you can also use a scroll saw or a coping saw to cut this. Now that we've got our curve cut, we're gonna head over to the workbench vise where we're gonna use a flexible sanding strip to sand the curves nice and flush. Back over to the workbench now where I've got some scrap wedges I'm using to separate the two pieces. Now my curves are exactly matched and I'm ready for a quick dry fit of the assembly. I'm going to mark where my fronts meet the side pieces so that I can split the difference when I go over to the router table. As I'm using half inch dowel in this design, I'm using a half inch straight cutting bit. Um, be careful when doing this to have a stop in place to help you control the workpiece as you push it into the router bit. Alternatively, if you don't have a router table or don't like this approach, you can leave your sides together and drill a hole in the center of the two pieces and then rip them in half afterwards. You won't have a full semicircle, but you'll have plenty of glue surface for this piece. Next, I'm moving over to my back where I'm going to be drilling out some pilot holes. This is how I'm going to attach the sides and the base to the cabinet. I'm using a scrap piece of pine here as a backer to prevent blowout. Moving on to the assembly, we're going to be gluing our sides to our back first. I prefer to use glue even when I'm screwing just to add that extra strength and give it longevity. Once we've attached our sides, it's time to move on to attaching our front to our sides. I'm using a pencil here to mark on the sides where the top of the front ends so that I can make sure I don't put glue too high. To attach the front, we're going to be using a 18 gauge brad nailer and filling those holes in later. Now that we're finished attaching the front, it's time to cut the bottom to size. I'm just using a scrap piece of plywood for this since none of the edges will be seen, but you can also use solid wood if you prefer that. To attach the bottom panel, we're just going to use brad nails from the sides and from the front, and we're going to screw in from the back. Easy enough. Next, we'll attach our dowels using glue and brads. I prefer to leave these a little bit long and cut them flush. This ensures a nice, perfect fit. And last but not least, we're going to use a little bit of wood filler to fill in all of our brad nail holes. This way, when we paint it, it looks nice and smooth and all of our hardware is hidden. Once everything's dried, it's time to sand everything down. Another trick I like to use is to hand sand all of the edges to break them so they're not quite so sharp. This is going to help make the piece feel better to the touch, but also help the paint adhere better. There were several good options on how I wanted to hang this on our wall. I decided to go with a keyhole cutting bit at the router table so that the hardware is hidden behind it and it will sit nice and flush to the wall, but go with whatever method you're most comfortable with. If you're familiar with our process, you know that I do the building and my wife Nicole does all of our painting and finishing work. We decided to go with a nice crisp white color for this project because it's going to fit the feel of our baby's room, but feel free to experiment with whatever color works best for your space.
And just like that, these are ready to hang up on the wall. Like I said earlier in the video, if you're interested in building these, we have plans linked down in the bio, so check those out. This is my first time making plans, so don't be too hard on me if they're not exactly what you're used to. So hopefully they're exactly what you need though. If you guys enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it to give us a like and a follow. And if you're on YouTube, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we make content like this in the future. Thanks a lot, guys.